This is Ultimate General Civil War on Legendary Difficulty with the UI mod 1.8. And what I'm showing you is I have two infields, two Lorenzes, three Mississippis, and three 42s. But also, I'm starting to pump my best troops into my best units when they take losses. And so my best units have the highest efficiency and firearms and stamina and so on. And I'm kind of giving you a one over of the officers and men that I've managed to collect. We're in very good shape. So the enemy army size is 34 to 39. That's actually going to go up. Actually, all three are going to go up, all three of those numbers. So we have about 16,000. The enemy ends up with about twice our, our army. So we're outnumbered 2 to 1, which is normal on legendary. Anything less than 2 to 1 is usually pretty easy. So I got everyone lined up, basically it's a straight line, and I put the Enfields uh, mostly on the left and Lorenz's um, on the left. And my goal is, uh, this is again a strategy by High Bob War Bob, and you might have noticed that instead of worrying about scaling, I just put everybody into the army. And that's a High Bob strategy. And the idea is to get everybody as much XP as possible. So I just want to push everybody into the corner, uh, push the enemy into the corner, and wipe them out. And really, I have so many infantry units that if someone escapes the big circle, doesn't really matter. I'll have plenty of, uh, plenty of infantry units to you know, send two infantry to go run anybody down and easily kill them. Any isolated unit is easy pickings. So, yeah, and I don't really want these guys to rout because they'll rout back into the supply wagons. So I just advanced with detached skirmishers to get their attention. And I want to get their attention. I want them to actually charge my detached skirmishers. Notice my infantry is slightly behind. So the question is, can I capture these wagons before that routing? See, one of them already broke, and he's running away. So I'm going intentionally for the ones that are the, the closest to the routing unit. And I want to get both of those, capture both of those wagons, and get them out of there. Now, you actually get more time in the battle if you don't capture the wagons right away. So that is an option, but I don't think that's going to be a problem here. Okay, now we begin pushing everybody forward. Now, if you've watched my battles before, this is closer to how I've fought my battles. I'm still struggling with keeping the detached skirmishers close to the parent unit. I tend to break off a detached skirmisher and have it fight separately. Uh, that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is keep the detached skirmisher close to the parent and have them stack with the parent and fight with the parent. So I don't do that particularly well here, but I do it closer than probably I have um, in other battles. And I, I keep getting better at it, but I, I basically want to um, always fight with these guys as though they're infantry units. I basically look at it as doubling the coverage of the battlefield. So I'm still working on that at this point. Um, and still trying to get better at it. But this this is a step in the right direction. Okay, he's charging, and I really don't want to run my units. I really just want to push his units against the edge of the board, but I think I'm going to have to get into melee. And also with this playthrough, you know, I spent a lot of time not getting into melee, but in all, you know, in 1,200 hours or something of playing Ultimate General. Now I want to get into melee. Anytime I can get two to one, I want to get into melee because I want to build up the the uh, melee stat on all of my units. Um, 
because all of my units are going to get into melee at the end of every battle, and the higher the melee stat, the better off we're going to be. So I, I think I dismounted my cav. He's in the woods. Dismounted is a good uh, way for him to be. Okay, we're in. We have a melee going on, and I have lots of my units around that, so we're going to go ahead and charge into that guy two-on-one. We're going to win. If we were on Major General or Brigadier General, um, him getting into melee and, and then getting beaten up really badly would take him out of the battle for a very long time. But on Legendary... Uh, these units come back after just a few seconds. But, um, yeah, that, I think that's more realistic on Major General, that when these guys take a serious beating, they don't come back right away. It takes them some period of time to recover and be able to get back into the fight. That is something I would like to see changed on Legendary Difficulty. There's no possible expl explanation for why a unit gets into melee, gets crushed, retreats uh, for three seconds, and then completely recovers and charges again. That's just not realistic. I think the, uh, the settings on Legendary, whatever those are, are completely realistic. And um, yeah, I mean, you can exploit that, but, but it's, it's, uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Units are not capable of that. They have to fall back, they have to reorganize, have to resupply, and so on. It's, it's not easy to do that. And, and they'd be exhausted after a charge. So anyway, we have this guy. He's still flashing white. He's still in melee. So I'm going to hit him again with a couple more units. And um, yeah, he's all the way down to 2100. So we'll just pick on him some more. Okay, the three supply wagons are, two of them are safely out of the way and the third one is about to be. So now we just need to corral these guys. And I basically have some guys in the woods on the right. Their primary job is just to keep the cav kind of corralled. I don't want those guys running loose. They can be a nuisance. And you'll notice I'm in melee, but I have like a detached skirmisher to the left. Uh, when the enemy is calculating the direction he's going to retreat, those detached skirmishers count as a unit. I've experimented and experimented with this. So I have units, you know, kind of stacked up to the left, and that should get the enemy to retreat to the right, which is what I want him to do. But if he retreats to the, to the left, I have enough units on the board that once I get everybody else corralled, I can detach two infantry. And really, I'm done with, you know, I could detach cav or something else too, and uh, that would work. So, yeah, he's retreating to the right, so it's all good, and his artillery is about to be exposed, so that's all good. Free shots on his commander. Oh, and his commander's already dead. Oh, hey, that that makes uh, the battle much easier. Before every battle, I write down the number of cores that the enemy does. I know that nobody else does this. That tells me how many officers and how many uh, supply wagons are going to be on the battlefield. So, yeah, that that was huge. Now I've got to kill this other officer, and as soon as possible... Because we're looking to just route the entire bunch of them into the corner. And, you know, the sooner I can push all of them and contain them, uh, the better. And, you know, this is actually a pretty good position. I have woods, and then the corner, there's no cover. So this is going to be, this is going to be very good uh, for my army. And that's what I want to do. I want to fight most of this with my guys in cover and... Uh, most of this with his guys in the open.
So my army has very good condition. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my guys in some kind of cover. If they're not in woods, they're in something that gives them some kind of cover. Yeah, and his cab is coming out, and I need to just... We don't have to defeat him, we just have to, to push him back uh, to the edge of the map. That's all we're trying to do. That artillery's dead. He's not going to be able to get away. Yeah, you can see I'm just incrementally pushing forward. There's no reason to go all out. This He can attack me, and I can shoot at him for a while. That's perfectly fine. One of his artillery is dead, and we're going to kill the other one in just a moment. Um, yeah, this is all going real well. I mean, just keep pushing everybody just a tiny bit forward each time. Of course, my guys in the woods, they don't, they're going to stay in cover. I want him to attack me a couple of times where I'm in the woods and he's in the open, but when we get him to uh, route, we want him to, re to route north. So yeah, and I'm I'm kind of like I'm really thinking about what I'm doing here because that's this is not normally how I fight this battle. I mean, normally it's just take the wagon, set up a defensive line, get some kills. But I'm thinking about uh, a lot more here. I'm thinking about degrading his units, not necessarily getting killed, but degrading his units with flank shots and making sure that he retreats in the direction I want him to retreat when he falls back. So... So I stacked up the Confederate left with a bunch of units. Now I have to spread these guys out. Um, I think stacking them up, it, I mean, it accomplished what I wanted. It, it got everybody to retreat to the right of the map. So. Everybody's going in the direction that I want them to there, but now I need to spread these guys out because there's no purpose in them being stacked up anymore. It, the Union right has completely collapsed. So, yeah, and again, we don't have to push and shouldn't push hard on these guys. We just, and, and notice how I'm hitting pause, bringing out a detached skirmisher, putting that on hold before I hit uh, take pause off. That that seems to work really well for me. So, yeah, I'm doing a whole bunch of things that I normally don't do, and actually I'm not doing it, like normally when I play Ultimate General Civil War, I'm not thinking about the mechanics. I'm just playing, if that makes sense. After 1,200 hours, everything is on um, autopilot when I'm moving my units around. You just, you know, you do this, you do this, you get a flank shot, you just move up and take it. What I'm doing right now, I have to think about every step, like I'm playing Ultimate General for the first time in my life, um, because these are new mechanics, and I, I, they're not second nature yet. I mean, you can see I'm like struggling with um, who's actually firing, who's not, when do I put the detached skirmisher back, you know, when I move forward, do I push the detached skirmisher forward? I, sometimes yes, or do I put the detached skirmisher back into the parent, move the parent forward, and then uh, detach the detached skirmisher. And I'm trying to figure out what works best and what works best for me and what I'm comfortable doing, and I'm thinking about it. And uh, that's that's why you're seeing, you know, like it's obvious that I'm thinking about what I'm doing. Is this the right thing to do? So... But there is a payoff to all of this, which you will see at the end of the video. Okay, that guy took... There were, there were really six units. Pandacrat has mentioned that uh, one of the things that's happening, because there are... When you detach the skirmishers, there are then twice as many units firing into one of the enemy units. So instead of three units firing into that guy, there were six. The detached skirmishers do damage, and they count as a volley into the enemy. They degrade him and make him want to rout. So, and they perform better than the parent unit. And 
Uh, so when he took those six shots, which he just did, he insta-routed. That's really good. Um, man, this would be so devastating, these tactics on uh, Major General. I mean, this would just be crushing, because that guy would retreat, and he'd take several minutes to recover. Um, yeah, the entire Union position at this point on Major General would just be flashing white units, pretty much. So, um, anyway, yeah, this is, this is really devastating. And, uh, yeah, now I'm trying to... I have gotten my detached skirmishers kind of lost. <laughs> like, I don't know where they all belong. I am thinking, okay, I have to return them to the parent uh, for the next phase, uh, but I forget where I put the parent. So, I'm kind of looking around. Okay, who goes with who? I think I screwed this up. Yeah, I'm also thinking at this point, if I'm having this much trouble with only 10 units on the battlefield, how am I, how am I going to do Shiloh? Well, it turns out by the time I get to Shiloh, this is... I've gotten used to it. Um, it's not perfect, and I still have a lot to learn, but I've gotten... By the time I get to Shiloh... I mean, you can see a difference in the learning curve. Also, by the time I get to Shiloh, uh, I'm much better at timing the um, the charges to get captures. So there are a lot of captures that I miss in the early battles because I'm still figuring this out. And, and the only way to do this is, I mean, you watch other people play, but, um, you know, it, the only way to really do it yourself is just to... Um, to, to load up the game and play it. That's the only way you get good at, at this sort of thing. Because, like, I watched Hi Bob do this, and he, he made it look easy, and then I'm doing it, and I'm just, you know, struggling. And it takes a while for me to get comfortable with it. Okay, it looks like the enemy is starting to like get pushed further and further back into the corner. You might remember that we started uh, significantly to the right, and now we're going to push these guys to the, to the left. And they have been, you know, as we've been pushing them slowly, they've been moving slowly, and now they're already kind of within the range of the entire tree line, if that makes sense. Like, they're, they've been pushed quite a bit. And the guys on the left... Uh, the Union right, they've been pushed into the corner. So we're in really good shape at this point. Okay, I'm, actually, I'm actually editing out some of the times that I give units orders because I it's so crowded in here I have to be very careful that everybody's firing because uh, they can be on top of each other and be blocking each other. So I'm hitting pause and making sure everyone has a target. The other thing that starts to be a bit of a challenge is, um, yeah, that it, it's going to get really crowded in here. Um, now he's charging with a couple of units into my allied calf. Uh, the allied calf takes some losses. Um, I would guess they took, well, we'll talk about it at the end when we go over the total losses. Um, I actually didn't look how many they took, but they, they took some losses. Like that guy just took, uh, probably over a hundred. Uh, he did provide cover to my troops though. So the calf unit on the right's kind of just in the way now. So again, all my guys um, are in cover. I think that cav unit went forward because I had them target a unit and they went forward to hit it. That's probably what, uh, to take a shot, that's probably what happened. Because I did not want him to come out of the woods, but um, they do, they do that. So now we pushed them all the way back. Um, the Union left has, it just keeps collapsing and um, 
Yeah, I keep, now I'm pushing the detached skirmishers forward to take more shots, to push him back again. I need to really target that general. If I can get some shots on him, that would be very handy, because these guys, uh, they're getting to the point where their recovery time would really be greatly reduced if McDowell was dead. So I don't have any shots on him right now, but yeah, if I had artillery, that's that's where my artillery would be targeted right now. Taking out that general is uh, would be very, very helpful right now. Okay, now I was talking about how they get on top of each other. Um, you can get units to park on top of each other, and they will both fire, but you have to hit hold while the game is on pause. Uh, while the game is playing, if you hit the space bar to get them to pause, um, it won't do anything. They'll, they'll just keep moving around and try to get into a, a, a location where they're not on top of each other. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause and then hit spacebar. And I'm kind of editing out doing all of that. But I need to do this with every unit because every unit is right here. And the other thing I want to do is I'm complicating that by also uh, putting out detached skirmishers. So hit pause, put out the detached skirmisher, hit hold. And yeah, I'm, I'm cutting out some of that because... That's a lot of commands in a short period of time, and there was a whole lot of pause, um, the game on pause, which was kind of ruining the pace of the video. So I took that out. But what I have to do is for each unit, get them into place, hit pause, bring out the detached skirmisher, then move the next unit right next to it so they're not blocking each other, hit pause, hit hold. Like You can see there's no space, right? These units would just be bouncing all over the place. And the only reason you get them, the only way you get them to stop doing that is to put them on hold. Also, they do more damage on hold, and by having detached skirmishers, also, uh, we have twice the number of hits that the enemy is taking, and twice the number of hits means uh, their morale is degraded and they rout. Um, so, and, and I hope you can see it in the video, but their numbers are just dropping. I mean, every, their numbers are just spinning. Um, it's really quite, it's really quite amazing. And so many of my units are blocked right now. I mean, I tried not to get them blocked, but they're blocked. Doesn't really matter. The enemy is being degraded so fast. But I, you know, I kind of want everyone to get shots and everyone, the more shots, the more firearms, XP, uh, the more morale. And you can see in the upper left corner that units are starting to surrender, although they don't stay surrendered very long. Um, actually, at this point, I could go in for a charge, but I don't because I'm still learning the mechanics that make them surrender. But these guys, when they start surrendering like this, y you can probably go in. And I, I have 10 infantry here. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the enemy under a 1,000 or somewhere close to a 1,000. But I mean, you can see the, the messages keep coming up that units are surrendering. And right now, definitely everybody should go. Yeah, and, and everybody just flashed surrender. So it's, it's time to go. I mean, it's go time. I should have uh, hit everybody charge at this point. So that didn't work at all. So I hit pause. And uh, you can either hit the C key for charge or... Um, like tell each unit individually to charge. I don't want the detached skirmishers to charge uh, because they will keep this pocket contained and the enemy less likely to try to route out. Not that it's going to matter. The other thing I should do is I should have put them on hold fire, but that doesn't matter either because everybody surrenders. Got over 11,000 captures, 11,000 infantry killed, 24,000 killed. I lost 671 and a good 200 of that had to be allied cav, but I, I didn't subtract it out. Um, so, yeah, 35.8 to 1, um, 36 to 1, let's say. So, yeah. Look at these losses. 100 losses killed 2,100. 50 losses killed 1,800. Yeah, the Mississippis lost 12 and killed 1,500. Oh, um, that's just 
I mean, that's something you'd expect artillery to do, a 24-pound howitzer. Um, this guy lost four. He had 42s. He lost four guys and killed 994. And what did this was the enemy was constantly routing and not and in retreating and degrading. So even when he did fire, he didn't do very much damage. So, yeah, I mean, this was just... I mean, look at these numbers. They're just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, one promotion, just one. And we captured 42s and Palmettos. We got Palmettos. Palmettos are good. Um, very good melee weapon, so that's fine. Yeah, we got the uh, ammo wagons. That's good. Yeah, that's ridiculous. 36 to 1. Probably 40 to 1 if I take out the cav. So, yeah, these units started just over 1,500, and here they are. Yeah, everybody did well. I got 4,200 men. I, I don't think I saved the game again, so I was, you know, could have gotten a bad die roll here. All three numbers went up. The armory went up to 36. Not surprising. We're still in great shape going into Shiloh. Uh, that's a fairly easy battle. The next one, not so easy. Um, the next one, the enemy gets just to pound on you for some very long period of time, and it's a harder battle. Uh, but uh, we're going to do okay. It's not going to be 36 to 1, but we're going to do all right. And um, it can be a tough battle. So, yeah, thank you for watching that, and I'll see you next time.